Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Narita Boy on the Nintendo Switch. An 80s neon infused adventure, is this one worth your cash or is it more a case of style over substance? Well hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we will do here, join our growing family and let's get started. Story and this was a whole a lot deeper than I went in expecting. I was kind of going in expecting something, you know, minimalistic, honestly, maybe a sentence to open the game, and that's kind of about it. But in fact, this was non stop. The game's constantly adding more and more information using NPCs around this world, and then what are known as memories. Now, the story here the creator, a genius, builds a video game console that's called the Narita One. Its flagship title, Narita Boy, it's an instant hit, the best selling game of all time. But there's a problem with it the game, the code, the digital world is actually trying to connect with reality, and now you must set out with the Techno Sword in hand and take out an enemy known as him and their army. It's fun stuff, it nails that kind of 80s tone and the cast of characters and smaller snippets of constant story just kept me locked in throughout. So gameplay on what we get here is an action platformer adventure that owes more than a little to the Metroidvania genre. Now I don't normally touch on graphics immediately but I do want to point out here, the 80s influence has led them to an aggressive CRT filter. I liked it but you can turn it off so you'll be seeing a mix of both footage styles today throughout the video. So to highlight this, this is the CRT mode and then this is the filter turned off. The gameplay loop here though, it basically comes down to this, explore this map, defeat enemies, find keys or floppy disks in Narita's case, unlock the next door and then push things forward. That can be the same location or even pushing you on to a new environment. The controls though, they start simple enough, essentially movement here is the ability to jump that I would call almost floaty, it's going to take a little getting used to but it is actually super responsive. And then combat, it's basically hack and slash if anything. Give the game maybe an hour though and it will start to build on this skill set with wall climbing, dashes, the ability to ram into enemy shields and basically stun them. You can call in friends to attack on your behalf, you can regen your health, you can land uppercuts. The game's constantly feeding you some sort of new technique and it's normally accompanied by a scene or an enemy where you can test it out. Enemy variety then around these moves is absolutely solid, always introducing something new as you progress, a reason to learn the tools as well that Narita Boy is putting at your disposal. Enemies, they can range from simple bats that will basically overwhelm you to think drones, the heavies that have sledgehammers in hand or maybe those that explode. There's ones that I would describe as basically wizards, there's some pretty epic boss moments. I wouldn't describe them as particularly challenging but they're still a lot of fun to kind of move their attack pattern. But yeah, learn the attack pattern, exploit it and that is how you will win at this one. Combat is like a great time. I love the fact it evolves from hack and slash to strategic or at least more strategic and quickly you'll be watching that health bar in the top left corner of the screen drop if you're not careful. I do wish the boss moments had a little bit more challenge to them. There's a few that got me and even a kind of a couple I would call almost a little cheap with their hitboxes like there's one early one in a bar that kind of shoots out at you and I'll show you right now on screen I couldn't quite decipher where the optimal placement for myself was but look still overall these kind of frustrating moments they were few and far between and mostly I really enjoyed taking them down. When it comes to problems it's metroidvania routes they work but it can get a little repetitive and this is definitely where the problems start to kind of you know rear their heads. It's really three things it's a little too heavy on the old backtracking from the very beginning of the game you're always solving the same puzzle to make progression you know find the floppy disk key move on it could have done with some extra variety in there and then the lack of a map it had me lost at points and it felt like it was simply battling with me just to extend the runtime. Narita Boy throughout has this fast and physical pace and yeah these moments of confusion they just really kind of stood out so even maybe a more generous hint that popped up on screen you know just kind of kicking me up the ass sending me in the right direction would have been a nice touch. It's also worth knowing it's not a particularly long game either around the six to seven hour mark I would say for my first play through. There's also then, this is kind of minor, but a level where you will sprint and basically dodge incoming obstacles. Not fun, it gave me flashbacks of the turbo tunnel from Battletoads. If you know the level, you know that is not a good thing. So overall gameplay wise, I had high hopes with Narita Boy and it mostly delivered on them. The platforming, it took a little while to get used to, 
but it is actually absolutely responsive. It's just floaty by design. The combat fist scroll and then the world and its delivery and slowly, you know, giving you story and progression, it mostly works. Sadly though, that repetition does kick in towards the end game and just a little variety and some extra guidance definitely would have gone a long way. So visuals and stunning, I adored it from beginning to end. I'm a sucker for that neon 80s look and they absolutely embrace it from beginning to end. Works perfectly to bring that whole Tron vibe to the experience. The soft focus camera then, you know that CRT filter, I don't think it's gonna be for everyone and I think it was wise to have an option to turn it off, but I do appreciate what it added to the whole vibe of the experience. Turning it off though, I will say it allowed me to appreciate truly how good some of the pixel work on display here is and it definitely gave us a very different feeling to the entire experience. Also in a few moments then that CRT filter for sure made it a little bit more challenging to spot something I needed to find within the world. Now rounding out the visuals and animations throughout are great whether it's your movement as, as you know Narita Bay has this very like fluid style to every action he makes and then even the enemy attacks to the floppy disk keys that kind of spin in the world. The attention to detail here is incredible yet it never gets repetitive visually. You know it's always going to be sending you to that next location relatively like frequently. Style wise it's a winner for me basically I'd describe it as synth wave the game and that is absolutely a compliment. Audio then and another winner. It's mostly synthwave. It's stunning from beginning to end with some nice pace changes to you know match the tone of the story being told. It just adds a whole lot of character to the game, which is just about the biggest compliment I could probably give this one. This visual design though it needed strong audio work, and I think they absolutely nailed that. Then to kind of like round out the audio, the sound effects, some nice retro dialogue sounds, you know, the old school kind of keys, some heavy attacks that resemble lightsabers, they absolutely knew what they were doing here. And yeah, there's just kind of like a whole pop culture feeling to it that kind of it, you'll find it the entire way through Narita Boy that like pop culture rolls over to the sound, the visuals, the gameplay, and yeah, it was just about everything that I hoped for. So overall, Narita Boy is a title I went into with high hopes, and in a lot of ways, it delivers fun and evolving combat, solid platforming with some floaty physics behind it that you're gonna need to get used to. But then it's just packaged up with some seriously impressive visual and audio design. Sadly though, not all here is perfect. It is relatively short, yet the backtracking still manages to you know, get a little bit dull. The Metroidvania design in general works, but it just lacks variety in its puzzles for progression. And then the lack of the map are just a weird design decision. Fortunately though, when it was all wrapped up, I still had a blast and these characters, this story and this world just charm me enough that I think anyone that basically likes the idea of that kind of 80s neon synthwave game will no doubt walk away happy too. A great eight out of 10 from me and for sure a recommendation. With that though, are you adding this one to the collection or will you be passing this one up? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. If you do want to check that out for yourself, I have linked it in the video description down below. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.